Today I want to talk about the University of Alberta's Computing Science program. More specifically, I wanted to provide a review of the program and the university in general from the perspective of an international student. Overall, I will be trying to answer the question of whether UAlberta is good for the money or if there is something else going forward that people do not know. Please keep in mind that while I may be providing the review from the perspective of an international student, a significant amount of it will be applicable for domestic students too. So with that out of the way, let's dive right in. Let's begin this review by talking about some of the good things. First thing that needs to be discussed is that the University of Alberta is one of the top schools in Canada and is quite well ranked globally too. The university floats around 5th or 6th spot in Canada in both THE and QS rankings in general and for the computer science programs too. While the rankings are not everything, it does mean that it is a recognized name and since it's one of the top schools, there's a decent number of employers recruiting from the program directly and it's a good place if you're considering graduate studies too. Now, the second good thing is the international tuition. There are a couple good things about it. First is that the tuition is guaranteed for four years of your degree. This means that as an international student, your tuition will not increase, making it significantly easier to budget. Speaking of the tuition amount now, the cost of tuition if you start in fall of 2021 is 29,500 Canadian dollars per year. This is between 30% and 50% cheaper compared to other universities at its level. Now, yes, this is just the tuition and the non-instructional fees can add up to another $2,000 a year or more, but that is the case across all universities. So just to drive the point further, the tuition for the CS program at the University of Waterloo is 63,000 Canadian dollars a year, 42,000 Canadian dollars at UBC, $50,000 at Queen's University, $47,000 at McMaster, $49,000 at McGill, and $60,000 for the first year at U of T with $62,000 for the second. The only university at its level that is cheaper is the University of Calgary at $25,000 Canadian dollars. Neat, huh? Let's keep going with all the good things by talking about reputation and start with the academic reputation. If you're really interested in machine learning, reinforcement learning, or artificial intelligence in general, the University of Alberta has some of the world's best researchers and professors in this area. And it's not just that field that has some great professors. There are many good professors teaching all sorts of courses. And the nice thing is that a lot of professors actually welcome undergraduate students to join their labs and do research with them. This means that if you're very interested in graduate school, you will have a lot of opportunities to get useful experience and glowing reference letters. Now let's talk about the university's reputation within the industry. If we're talking about local industry in Alberta, the graduates from the University of Alberta are well liked and there are a lot of good companies strewn across the province that hire graduates for full-time positions and students for internships. In addition to that, there are massive, well-known companies that recruit directly from the University of Alberta. I'm talking about tech companies like Microsoft, Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, IBM, and others. They hire for both internships and for full-time opportunities. One quick thing, just because they hire from the University of Alberta doesn't mean that they are easy to get into. Speaking of companies that are incredibly hard to get into, a lot of high-frequency trading shops from the US hire from the University of Alberta. I personally know people that have gone to Hudson River Trading, Jane Street, and Citadel Securities, and some other funds. While the number of people going there is small, it is not zero, and that is an important thing to know. Next, I will quickly talk about the quality of education. It's alright. About as good as you can expect from a university in the top 250 globally. From talking to a lot of people that studied all over the world, I realized that the resources available, the courses, and the quality of teaching is roughly the same at all the universities, ranked 50 to 250 globally, so I don't have much to say here. Let me quickly add a few other dope things. First is the amount of available scholarships, especially for international students. There are a lot of available entrance scholarships for international students. It's genuinely awesome. I personally managed to get $17,500 off the cost of my degree from scholarships alone, with most of that being from entrance scholarships. Another amazing thing is that the University of Alberta allows you to actually claim all of your AP transfer credits that you have with some small exceptions. So if you have taken five AP courses and got a four or higher in all of them, you can essentially shave off a semester of university, which means you get to pay less and graduate earlier. 
I personally did that and it was awesome. I got to save about $12,000 in tuition and an entire four months off of my degree. That is something that a lot of other universities did not let me do and it's something that I actually value a lot personally. Last thing that absolutely needs discussion is Edmonton. The city where the University of Alberta is located is a city with a relatively low cost of living. Additionally, I personally like the campus quite a bit and the area surrounding the campus has a lot of hiking trails along with White Avenue being there. Not to forget that Edmonton actually gets a lot of sunny days even during winter. So to summarize all the good things, the University of Alberta is a well-ranked school that is well respected in both industry and academia. It has relatively cheap international tuition, along with many ways to reduce costs and time spent in university. Let's also not forget that Edmonton has a cheaper cost of living, making this university genuinely a great value. However, not everything is good about it, so I think that now is a good time to talk about the bad things about the University of Alberta. Let's begin discussing the bad things by bringing up an issue that really only concerns international students. There is a hidden problem associated with the tuition model at the University of Alberta. If you're an international student, your tuition is guaranteed to be the same for four years regardless of how many courses you take in a given fall and winter period. Therefore, if you want to take fewer courses each semester, each course will be significantly more expensive. This means that the only people that can take their time with their degree are either international students that are well off or domestic students. While you might not think that taking fewer courses is important, I personally believe that having the choice to is. After all, I already discussed to some extent how taking fewer courses can lead to higher GPAs in a video before, but the benefits of taking fewer courses do not end just there. You get to take your time learning the material for each course better if you take fewer courses each semester. Another bad thing is that international students mostly get access to entrance scholarships and not continuing scholarships. There are far fewer scholarships available for when you're a second year student and later, which means that the steep discount for the tuition you get in first year disappears pretty quick. Keep that in mind when budgeting for university. Let's start talking about computing science specific things. First is the fact that if you're not into ML, RL or AI, there actually aren't all that many courses in certain areas of computer science available. There is a limited number of theory courses and there is only one professor that teaches advanced computer architecture and compiler construction. This means that those courses are only offered in alternating years and if the professor decides to leave or go on sabbatical, the courses are simply not offered. There is also a problem that some courses have too few seats, so it becomes next to impossible to get into the really popular courses like web development or advanced games programming. Another thing that is pretty bad is that the department has surprisingly few resources, both for student support and even some technical resources. As an example, due to lack of funding, the GPU course has rather dated hardware for you to work with. Additionally, the admin staff in the department are stretched very thin, meaning that you often have to fend for yourself. I honestly left the worst part about the CS department for last. The worst part is the lack of a standard co-op program. Instead, you get the Science Internship Program, or SIP, which works in a significantly different way to a co-op program, since you're almost forced to take a single 8 to 16 month work term. The SIP admin staff are extremely pushy, force you to take the first offer you get even if you're still interviewing with others, and make it actually rather difficult to split your work term between multiple employers. Just for reference, the really big companies that generally pay the best only do 3-4 to four month work terms, so it can make your life difficult if you try to work there. Last thing that makes SIP a real problem is the fact that it is of questionable value for domestic students and a downright ripoff for international students. Let's say you're doing an 8 month SIP placement in winter and summer, then as a domestic student you will pay $1765 in co-op fees while as an international student, you will pay seven and a half thousand dollars. That is an insane price, given that the only benefit that SAP provides you with is the ability to do a work placement term during the school year. Okay, to be fair, if you do a 16 month SAP work placement, the fees do go down after the first eight months quickly, but that is still absolutely wild. 
Honestly, the only reason this shouldn't be a complete deal breaker when looking at this university is because the university's reputation is still rather good, meaning that you can still find summer internships on your own. This means that if you play your cards right, you can get an internship on your own after your second or third year for the summer, without relying on SIP. All of this combined together is why I personally tend to direct people away from SIP, but your mileage may vary. Anyways, I would like to wrap up this section with two things about the university campus culture and Edmonton. First is the fact that the University of Alberta is a commuter school, meaning that it can be more difficult to make friends and have the college experience that you might imagine for yourself. This is a bad thing, as it can push on your mental health as a student. The last thing that needs to be mentioned is that Edmonton, as a city, is a bit boring. During the school year, not much actually happens in the city. I mean, you can go bar hopping on White Avenue, but that gets boring after second year. The city is colloquially called Deadmonton for that reason. To be fair, summers are actually quite fun with festivals and concerts happening, but not everyone stays in Edmonton for the summer. <laughs> Anyways, I feel that that is enough bad things to mention. However, you saw the title of this section and you know what's coming. We now have to talk about the downright ugly things about the University of Alberta. The first thing I will mention might make you laugh, especially since I already put Edmonton as both a good and a bad thing. Now I have to talk about Edmonton again and justify why it is something that I would consider awful enough to put in the ugly section of the review. It's the climate. While there is a lot of sun year-round, it does not change the fact that winters in Edmonton are downright awful. I've personally witnessed an entire week where the warmest it got was minus 35 degrees Celsius. The coldest temperature I had to personally deal with was negative 52 degrees Celsius after accounting for wind chill. In all fairness, my personal philosophy is that it's better to deal with the absurd cold than with intense heat. But after three and a half years of Edmonton weather, I left for Vancouver for a more mild climate. Let me just describe what it's like to be outside in negative 52 degree weather to walk to university. I was wearing my thermal shirt, a t-shirt, a woolen turtleneck, and a down jacket along with a winter face mask, but my entire torso was still feeling cold. My eyes were starting to hurt and I had to make a stop halfway to campus in a cafe because my lungs were seriously hurting from the cold air. Honestly, the only reason I went to class was because I was TAing it that morning. Let me also quickly describe how a winter typically goes in Edmonton. Starting in November, the weather hits minus 5 to minus 10, then changes to be minus 10 to minus 20 in December. The weather is mostly the same in January, apart from a random week where the weather just hits minus 45 with wind chill for a few days. February typically has weather from minus 20 to minus 35 for practically the entire month. In March, it finally lets up a bit, and ranges from minus 5 to minus 15. In April, the weather can be anywhere from minus 5 to plus 10 degrees. In other words, you have to really prepare for Edmonton winters, as they are absolutely brutal, and this climate becomes a serious consideration if you come from a warmer climate yourself. Now that we talked about the physical climate, we have to talk about the political climate in Alberta. The provincial politics are actually the other ugly thing about the University of Alberta. Let me preface the discussion with this. I am just discussing how the political situation is affecting the University of Alberta as an institution and how it affects the students. The current political party in charge of Alberta has decided to make serious cuts to education funding across the entire province back in 2019. After that, the province has made another set of cuts with practically no warning right after making the first set of budget cuts. This means that the university suddenly has had to deal with a significant reduction in available funds that it basically had no time to prepare for. What does that mean to the students? Well, it means a lot actually. The university is currently undergoing a significant administrative restructuring, and the cuts against its budget go straight as a reduction in services available for students. A lot of employees had to be laid off, including building maintenance staff, along with staff that provided student support. The already subpar mental health support at the university has been made even worse. The already strained administrative support has become even worse, and the academic support is also becoming worse. All of this reduction in support services becomes a reduction in the quality of life of the entire student body. The fact that provincial tuition tax credits have disappeared does not help. 
Oh, and let's also consider the fact that funding for and wages off nurses in the public sector in Alberta have been cut right before the pandemic too. So if you're interested in going into nursing, then that's a yet another thing to consider. In this case, weirdly enough, the domestic students got hit harder because the domestic tuition had to rise as the cuts to the education spending rose too. I will not even talk about the provincial response to the COVID-19 pandemic in Alberta because that is a problem too. Anyway, honestly, I really don't want to keep talking about all the bad things going on with Alberta. So let me actually provide you with a summary and provide a final verdict for the University of Alberta. Do not click off yet as I have something else important that I would like to mention. Alright, I have told you about all the good, bad and ugly things there are to mention about the University of Alberta, so now I need to summarize them. The University of Alberta is a solid school with a good reputation and is especially good if you're into ML, RL and AI. It does have some bad aspects to it, most notably the lack of a co-op program and the fact that it is a commuter school. Additionally, the physical and political climates in Alberta are impossible to overlook. However, for the price, can it really be matched? Well, in my opinion, it actually can be beat. Let me introduce you to Simon Fraser University in British Columbia. It is a school that is ranked lower than the U of A, but its reputation for CS in both academia and industry within Canada and the USA is comparable to the U of A. Additionally, the international tuition fees at SFU for CS are $32,000 Canadian dollars a year. It has a strong co-op program with reasonable fees, has an amazing climate due to being located in the greater Vancouver area, and it does not have to deal with the absurd political climate like the one in Alberta. Do keep in mind that SFU is located in Burnaby, so the cost of living will be much higher, and it's not as good if you're really into ML, RL, and AI. But do keep this lesser known school in mind if you're looking to get a quality education in CS in Canada on a smaller budget. However, this video is about the University of Alberta. So what is my final verdict about it? It is a great school and I'm honestly still surprised that it has managed to maintain its tuition so low for international students. But the lack of a co-op program and the awful climate should be a consideration for any student thinking about going there. All right. If you found this video interesting, insightful, or just plain old useful, then please consider subscribing to my channel and maybe liking this video. Thank you for your time. Bye.